and our co-founder, General Valenzuela, is right here. He's also our senior uh, consultant for the Center for Terrorism Law. He's a retired two-star general. We've known each other for years. Uh, in fact, I was a major and he was a colonel, so he did a whole lot better than I did in terms of uh, climbing up the, uh, the ladder of success. But uh, we feel that we've created something that's very successful here at St. Mary's University School of Law. There are 200 law schools in the country. We're the only one that has anything like this. We put on these seminars from time to time, and as you know, they're pro bono, which means we don't charge for them. Um, and, uh, and so we're thrilled to have everybody here that's interested in this particular topic. Obviously, things are hot, uh, and they're going to get a lot hotter. We've had a sea change now in the, uh, the government structure, and we can expect some significant changes to uh, be on the horizon. We've got some top-notch speakers. In the interest of time, uh, you've got their information in the flyer, so I'm not going to introduce each speaker as they come up. Um, many of them you already know, and, um, and so that's kind of what I want to do. I've actually taken myself off the speaking list so we can have more speakers uh, to talk about the real world issues and folks that are on the ground that are doing these things. In front of you, you'll see a flyer. Uh, if you fold that in half, it's about our uh, pro bono activities for soldiers. In fact, today at 1600, I've got a, uh, a two-star general that's going to make a final decision on Major Supernova, which is one of the case studies there. If you fold that in half, you'll have a nice little flyer for you. Uh, we have a wonderful opportunity. As you know, the university doesn't give us any money to operate. That's why we had three times as many people wanting to come to this conference, but uh, it's just a function of how much you know, you've got and how much you can make in terms of the room size. Uh, we do have media here today, though, and so we're going to get some, some good coverage. Um, um, but um, we have an anonymous donor that's pledged to give a dollar-for-dollar dollar match for any funds we raise between now and January, and that goes straight to a special fund site to help soldiers wrongfully accused of war crimes, rules of engagement violations, and other misconduct and function of their duties. Now, we don't represent soldiers that are guilty. Um, I get calls all the time from people that actually did the crime, and we have the luxury of picking people that are uh, that are truly innocent, and the system works pretty well. I mean, 95% of the time, the UCMJ works well, things go along smoothly, but there's about 5% of the time where the system falls apart, basically because of political correctness. Most of it, if you look at the root, why did this happen? Political correctness. People don't have the guts to stand up and do what's right. They're more concerned for their next, you know, uh, rank up the ladder, and therefore they throw people under the bus so they can walk on their bodies up that chain of command to what they think is their their dream assignment or dream job, and many people are sacrificed along the way. That's kind of been the, uh, the motor for some of these things that have gone bad, because in many of these cases, you just can't make it up. Um, so anyway, we have that in front of you. If you know people that, uh, that would like to give, please pass that on to them as well, because this opportunity expires at the end of January, and that'll, uh, that'll go a long way to uh, assisting us in our mission to help these troops. Um, so that's my shameful plug. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Major General Alfred Valenzuela. He will provide a greeting to you. Our dean is uh, coming off an airplane, so he's going to pop in at some point, and we, uh, uh, we, we hope we can get a couple of words out of, uh, out of our new dean, who's been about two years, and he's uh, very supportive of our center as well. So, General? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, what, they, what you do when you become a general, they, uh, they tell you, pick three, pe uh, three persons real quick, uh, have a good doctor, have a good chaplain and a good uh, a good lawyer, and Jeff Jeff happened to be my general counsel, uh, and had, had it not been for him, I'd have been a four star general. Oh. <laughs> good job. Good job. Uh, actually, uh, Jeff and I come from a from a black world uh, special operations type of deal, and so obviously um, a lawyer becomes very very critical and very important. So as Jeff was getting ready to retire, um, I was blessed. Um, because I sit on the Board of Trustees of St. Mary's University, uh, I had an opportunity to, to call the President and just say, uh, we've got a stud puppy uh, in the United States Army uh, who is not all there, but he's missing a few Sundays here and there, but he's a hell of a lawyer. And I think he'd be a tremendous asset uh, to St. Mary's University Law School. And so we decided when Jeff came home uh, that uh, obviously I was looking at retirement as well. And so we decided to co-found something that focused uh, on terrorism law and obviously the creation of the center. Again, as Jeff mentioned, the only law school in the United States that focuses on that. 
and then does something very really interesting when we take our interns, that is to say those second and third year law students, and get them involved in the processes, uh, particularly of uh, putting together briefs for those maybe that we were trying to prosecute at Guantanamo Bay, uh, some of those nice guys. And so it got the students involved, they take the course Jeff teaches, and then we do these seminars where we go out to the public, because we feel obligated, obviously, morally, ethically, and legally, to tell you what you need to hear. Uh, a lot of us general officers are politicized. Uh, I'll, go, I'll stop there. Uh, a lot of us have been fired uh, for standing up to be counted. And so consequently, uh, the Center for Terrorism Law was focused on trying to get, uh, uh, trying to be a supportive element uh, to the federal government uh, to take care of uh, those folks who were bad guys and bad gals. Having said that, we named it the Center for Terrorism Law. But recently, uh, I think, uh, and I really want to make sure that you look at the, the inside of this brochure. What Jeff has done, is done something very unusual, pro bono, because we have dis decided to defend our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, uh, based on what we call the rules of engagement, who may not have been given uh, a true test of what it is they were up against, much less what they're being accused of, and so forth. And so a lot of your American men and women who serve in the military are being held and uh, looked at for having violated the rules of law, rules of war, and or uh, things of that sort. And so what Jeff has done, God bless him, is again reached out to his students and said, hey, let's, let's see what we can do to protect our men and women. Unfortunately, every ones that we've taken care of so far, and the ones in the future, probably will have no military career in the future. That is to say, that once you get involved in this arena, your chances of being successful in the, in the long run are probably nil. And so consequently, the idea is, uh, is to take advantage, help these folks, and then draw conclusions on how we can make the system a lot better. So, Jeff, I just want to salute you. I applaud you for doing that. And I think that uh, it takes a lot of guts, again, a lot of moral courage, and, and Jeff has done that well. Let me just divert real, real quick. Obviously, you've, you've seen the brochure that talks about border security. I would take the word out border uh, just for a moment and because it applies to all types of security, although we may focus on the border, which is probably the most important thing uh, in, in present times, if you will. But this really is security of the, of the United States focused on the border. And the border is the United States. That is to say, both in the north and Canada, both in the south, uh, tremendous, tremendous issues. Uh, real quick, obviously a lot of turmoil, a lot of violence, a lot of crime, gangs <coughs> in Central America. Uh, most of the folks that are coming across the border, I think by my estimation, may be just as many Central Americans as they are uh, Mexican uh, who are coming across the border. So you got to throw in that factor. you got Venezuela, uh, Bolivia, uh, Nicaragua, uh, and Ecuador, who are still somewhat leaning towards the communist side of the, of the fence. Obviously, Hugo Chavez had a lot to do with that. Uh, he was crazy, so he decided to get some buddies, and these four countries came along. And so you have that turmoil. Uh, poverty in Venezuela, folks are coming into Panama. Uh, you got Colombia, the FARC just signed an agreement. Uh, that won't last long, so I'm telling you. They're used to having millions of dollars. Now they're going to be given a piece of land and given hundreds of dollars. And so after a year, you're going to have to figure out, wow, I was, I was rich before, and now I'm no longer rich, and I've got to change my, my ammo. So that's going to cause some problems. Uh, so you have Colombia and Venezuela. Panama, remember, uses the American dollar. Every American bank uh, has a bank in, in Panama. There is a thing called money laundering, and that is uh, big and uh, alive and well. And, and so all of that has to feed in uh, to narco-terrorism uh, narco as well. So if you just kind of look at security, uh, think about this. There's heroin, there's opium, and cocaine. So when ISIS and the other terrorists cannot lean on oil, I would be willing to bet you that there's a, the drug movement that would kind of lean towards supplying the funding that they would no longer have if the oil were to dry up. It's not going to dry up, but what it is, it's a diversion and so consequently, uh, they, will, they will try anything and everything. 
they can outgun us, they can outrun us, they can outspend us. I mean, that's who the enemy is, is today. Personal opinion, I think we're a heartbeat away from a gunfight. I think that uh, if we're not careful, we don't protect the border, obviously we could set ourselves up for disaster. And so I think, as Jeff mentioned, there's a lot of changes. The experts are going to talk to you about that. We reached out <coughs> to find the folks that could really tell you what True North is all about, and not us uh, speculators, if you will. But nevertheless, I, I thank you for coming. I look forward to having you all participate. Dialogue is important, but the speakers are awesome. They bring to the table a lot of expertise, and so it behooves you to kind of listen to them. Again, thank you. Thank you for supporting the center. Thanks for coming. Okay.